Good morning. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know us, we are Roland and Jerry Beaujolais. For the purists, for the purists, it's Beaujolais, but that's besides the point. Anyhow, this morning, uh, we're going to be reading the word, but I do want to mention that uh, we have been here about 10 years, about, about 10 years now. Uh, like Pastor just said, I serve on the board, and I also help out with uh, repairs and maintenance and campus development. Uh, Jerry works with the Pace Setters Group. She's on the office volunteer staff. Um, she hosts one of the prayer groups. Um, I'm missing something. I do a few things. A few things. So <laughs> we're, we're kind of busy in the church, but uh, we really enjoy it. it it's our home. You know, we were here early in 2000 for about a year, and then we left for a while. And when we came back, we had been church hunting for a few years. And the, when we came back about 10 years ago, the minute we stepped through the doors and we were greeted, we said, ah, we're home. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, so this morning we're reading from Revelations 21, 1 through 12. And if you can, I'd invite you to stand for the reading of the word. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from a throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. Yea, <laughs> for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars... Their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, and he spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. <laughs> it had a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and on the gates the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to let you get started because I need to go get my glasses. They're down there in my purse again. I, I so, wonder if your son yeah. could, could grab those. Maybe he you. could. Could you throw that to me? Yeah, that's it. There, Thank oh, you. wow. Sorry. Can you see, be careful walking? Up. I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things we worry about. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful reading. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Love that. Love that. Hey, um, you know, when... Uh, you're growing up, and, it's, and uniquely for Jennifer and I, we, we both were raised in homes of, uh, as, uh, in, in pastor's homes, as, as we say. So, you know, you, you grow up uh, from the early days, you know, you just, the culture of going to church, participating and engaging in uh, the family of God, that was just, would be very normative, and, and you're, you're certainly influenced, and you're, you're certainly in, in our uh, background, we would you know, you'd hear about end times and you would be mindful of the return of Christ. And, and uh, I always would remember, um, I mean, way back, I'd go visit my grandparents and like their favorite <laughs> song is I'll Fly Away, you know, right? So, <laughs> so I was like, there was, there was this always excitement and energy. And, and yet I remember early on as a kid that many of my prayers, my, my final prayers, I would remember this very clearly, that I would, that I would pray, uh, Father, please um, keep my grandparents 
alive mm. um, to, where, to where they get yeah. to see the return of Christ. Keep my whole family. I, I, I want us all to not have to die and only experience the rapture, the return of Christ. And like I, I just had that mind that was like, God, please don't let my parents die. So that was like some of my final, final prayers at that's night. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And my prayers were far less worthy. Mine were more like, please come before the math test. <laughs> or please come before my Greek exam. Like I really. You still prayed that in I, seminary. I do. Too, oh, right? I did. Yes. So, Very recently. It's just kind of like, you know, but, but that's, that's the thing though. We, yeah. we, sometimes we, I think we, we feel like, okay, wait, don't come yet because there's still so much of life that I want to experience. Yeah. And we're worried that what comes next might be, you know, less good, right? It's, it's going to be kind of, kind of boring. And yeah. I think, honestly, one of the worst commercials ever was that cream cheese commercial where the person is like on a cloud and I think they're eating bagels, which that's good. I mean, bagels are good <laughs> yeah. with cream cheese, yeah. but they're like, you know, playing a harp or whatever. And it's like, ah, oh, that's so boring, right? Who wants that? Yeah. I mean, bagels get old after a while. <laughs> so, right, right. So the, the, the vision of that. And so, uh, you know, a, a, a more modern expression of this is the idea that we'd embrace a, a bucket list where we would have mm, yes. uh, things that we want to do, uh, you know, so you, you have, how many have a bucket list? Is just curious, like, is it, is it good stuff? Is mm -hmm. it interesting stuff? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. you, you're going to tell us maybe? I can, sure. Okay. So as you know, I'm no camper, like just, I'm not so, great at that. So camping is not on your bucket list? Well, except except this kind of camping. So I really want to see the Northern Lights, like the Aurora Borealis. Yeah. And I've heard that you can like sleep in a clear igloo and like heated. watch it. Yeah, oh, oh, super heated. Oh yeah, I may <laughs> bring an extra generator just to make <laughs> sure. sure. Cause, yeah. Cause yeah, I don't want to be cold, but I yeah. would love to see that. Yeah. I'd love to see the Northern Lights. You know, so bucket lists are a good thing. Here's mm. the thing. Do you have that, yours? So or are you going to say yours or? I'll do it at the end, okay. like I did last I'll week. I'll remind you. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. So uh, here's, here's the thing with, with our end times doctrine or our afterlife, uh, you know, our doctrine about afterlife. Scripture reveals a, an important balance that we embrace a, a future, a tomorrow, an eternity that is glorious and splendid, while at the same time an embracing of today. For every breath that we breathe, God has a purpose for the moments that we're here on earth. And, and so we want to live it and live it well. But here's the point with, with, a, with a bucket list. Consider this. Um, it doesn't end the, the possibilities of accomplishing and seeing and, great, and doing great things. We tend to assume that's going to end. My opportunity is going to end on this side of glory. Heaven, or Scripture reveals a heaven, a new earth that is absolutely unlimited at the possibility. So I say lean into the bucket list. Just don't think we have just this side of glory to fill it. Amen. Think about that. Amen? Because there is a hope that we have that far exceeds the grave. That's right. Amen. Right? Amen. And uh, we want to we explore it because part of our, part of our culture today has, uh, has, has certainly been... Um, well, it's, it's, it's atheistic, right? When, when, when we're godless, when we operate with a godless mindset, it also means that there is an, the afterlife is no, is non-existent. The idea that when you die, everything ends. Your soul, everything ends. And so what, what the pervading... Uh, Philosophy, I, I think that's a mm. fair way to say it. Mm. pervading philosophy, has, I've got to do everything now. I've got to experience, and if I have desires, if I have thoughts, feelings, I've got to experience it now, no matter what the boundaries might be in the world. And so it is created, and if we're not careful, even as believers, we bought into the YOLO, right? Or what was the, what was the soap opera that went on forever? One life to live. Well, yeah. I mean, I didn't watch it, but no, I'm just no. saying, okay. we are followers of Jesus, and so, um, yeah. So that. So there you I go. I heard about it once. Yeah, yeah. forty-three years, and oh, well, I'm, however many years it was. And uh, but but here's what Paul reminds us. Just just catch this real quick, as, as and we'll we'll close the loop on this just as we set it up. Um, Paul 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 makes the statement uh, in in Ephesians two. He reminds the church, before Christ, before your relationship, mm. you were what? Separated. Let's, yes. let's go to that verse, Ephesians 2, 
12. He says, remember that you were at the time, what? Separated, separated from, Christ. from Christ. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise. Having no what? No hope. No hope. Like that was the way I was before. And there's that without God, which, which by the way, atheo, mm-hmm. oi, excuse me, atheoi, is the, where we get the word atheist. It is the idea of being without God, godless, without a hope, of a future. So serious, if we're going to be followers of Jesus, we have been brought near in a re- relationship. We're no longer alienated. Right. And at the same time, we have a hope. A Amen. hope. And that, that, that should explode in our mind in thinking of all the possibilities of what that's going to look like for all eternity. Amen? And Because uh, that, that affects, that would affect, if I'm, if I'm going to think I only have this life, it's going to affect how we live our life. Absolutely. Every decision, yeah. everything we take, you know, fulfill our lives with, yeah. all our values, everything will yeah. be determined by that. Yeah. If this is it. If this is it. If <laughs> right. this is it. So, right. so here's the question that we just leave because we're closing the series. We're going to start actually next Sunday, by the way. Uh, Youngren's, uh, Stephen Sandy yes. Youngren's, uh, incredible mission partners. They're, they'll be here and he's preaching next Sunday. Incredibly Wonderful. gifted. Um, powerful Sunday. And then we're going to yeah. start our trek into the Passion Week. But here's the question for the end of the series. How should we live now? How should we live now? We just, we have this amazing book that I'm hoping, we're hoping, that you are, are fully engaging with the, the wow and the awesomeness and the splendor of the revelation. But what is, how does that affect the today, the here and now? And I just, we just want to offer these three things in light of the revelation and and. There's so much we can talk about regarding Revelation. You know this. And seriously, if you have any detailed questions, that's why I had the elders stand. Yes. They will answer them yes. for you. Yes. Okay? Absolutely. If you have yes. any lack of clarity, you know, <laughs> they will, Barry is on it. Pastor Bob. All right. So they will, they will do that. So, but here's, here's a couple things that this text in particular, just real quick, that this, this text in particular reveals the Revelation. First is this. God is everlastingly with his people. Amen. You can count on that. Thank you, God. And, and here's the other one. He culminates, is in this, we see this from the text, he culminates all of his promises. Because all of his promises are what? Yes, yes and amen. amen. In who? Christ in Jesus. In Jesus Christ. And the third is this. He renews all things in glory. So, as it were, they would say, you could take that to the bank. Like, these are the absolutes. We're all in agreement. Good orthodox faith, good solid grounding. We're going to all agree on this one. And we can count on it. And it should be this that permeates, students, check this out. It's this thinking, it's this knowledge, really, that should permeate our priorities, how we live our life, how we, prior, how we, how we live everything out, our relationships, all of it um, that we go there. So yeah, let's 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 hit into the text because these first couple verses are just it's it's hits it off and running. Verse he really does. All right. So John is writing these words. He's uh, describing this incredible vision that he had. So here we go. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride. Adorned for her husband. So let's just agree at the minimum that whatever is coming is going to be better than what has passed. That the old is gone and the new has come. So if we think about what Jerusalem would have meant, what would that city have meant to the first hearers here? So we know Jerusalem, if, if there was a location on earth that was the most important to, the, to, the, our, to Jewish people, it was absolutely Jerusalem. And if there was an address or a piece of real estate inside the city of Jerusalem that was the most important, it was the temple, where the temple was. Because this was the city of God that housed the house of God, where the presence of God, it was like the locus of God's presence on earth. This is where God had chosen to dwell and meet with his people in the Old Testament. Incredibly important city. This would have meant very much to them. 
And so we see what was going on in the city of God, all kinds of things. So the temple was kind of the, you know, like the, the center of life for them. That's where yep. worship happened. It's where training and teaching happened. Uh, there were financial matters that were dealt yep. with there. There were legal matters that were dealt with there. It was really the, the heartbeat of life yep. for a Jewish person. I mean, it would, we, we could picture it in a, in a redeemed, in a healthy state. <laughs> so a, a city like New York, you've got all the activity at the heart of it. Times Square, grab that one for a second. So, and I, the reason we wanted to make sure we feature this is this is what's going in, in the mind of those first hearers that this city is, there's activity. Now, that we're, that's going to be important for us to remember when we connect mm-hmm. the dots that's here. Right. But just remember, there's activity that's right. <laughs> in the city, right? And it, except it's good activity. Right. Yeah. And in the golden age of the nation, when, when David was king yeah. and then his son Solomon right. was king in that beautiful time of peace, when God gave them rest from all the enemies, Solomon, through, with the help of David, built this glorious temple. And, and this would have been the thing that they would all want to get back to. And we see this over and over again yeah. throughout the Old Testament where they just so miss those good old days. They really want to get back <laughs> there because that's when things were great. And that's when they had this beautiful temple yeah. where they could go and worship God. But Jerusalem and the temple very much connected to who's dwelling there, who lives there. It's the presence of God and the people of God together in this beautiful place, right? right? But we see one thing that happens while the Jewish people were desiring this restoration was um, some extra biblical Jewish writers, and, and Jesus dealt with this with the disciples as well. We see this in, in the Gospels and in Acts, that their idea of restoration, it f- frankly, included national power and wealth and dominance over the Gentiles. This was all kind of caught up in their thinking of what it would mean for the kingdom of Israel to be restored. Yeah. Jesus is, you know, getting ready to drop the Great Commission. He's ready to ascend. He's, he's died and resurrected, and he's, you know, there with the disciples in Acts chapter 1, and he tells them, you know, stay in Jerusalem. Power's coming. The Holy Spirit is coming. Don't leave until the Holy Spirit comes. And their words to them reveal their, their thinking here, because they say, well, Lord, at this time, is it now that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He's like, well, no, it's, it's not about that. <laughs> it's, it's about the kingdom of God coming on earth and that, your part in this, right? Isn't that right? wild? Like, they, right? They, they were still hoping. Coming of the thing. Holy Spirit, the yeah. third person of the Trinity, right? And so are now you going to make everything good and orderly for us yeah. and comfortable? Right. I mean, it's, it really does. It reveals a mindset That's there. It's true. So. But the beauty is the Holy Spirit does come yeah. and he does empower these people. And then they are set on fire, yeah. right? To yeah. take God's word into the world. Jesus often moved his followers right? He moved the thoughts yeah. from, the, from a, a Jewish nationalism, Jewish, Jewish power, you guys are it, into something greater. The question is, what's the something greater? Okay, because mm-hmm. that's going to connect with what we just read in the text with Roland. So here, here's, here's just an effort to, to connect the dots. Jen just mentioned this. They had in their idea, here's this temple coming down, the, the uh, holy city coming down, and so in one sense, there could be this, this mindset that says, wait, physicality. It's all about the physical, the material, physical building, physical structure, physical city, square footage. Um, but isn't it Jesus himself that pushed back on that limited thinking? Now, please hear me. It doesn't mean that there's not physical. But really, is that where our focus should be? Is that what our zeal is about? Or is it what Jesus was doing when he, when he really pushed back? I mean, you know, it wasn't odd for Jesus to mess with that kind of thinking, right? He did it with the temple. He, he goes in and, and what does he do? He turns over the tables in the outer courts. when they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're making it a den of thieves. He refers to it as a house of prayer. And he comes back. It, John records this because John especially focuses, gives attention to to things like this with Jesus. It says, so the Jews had to, they, they're asking, what, is saying? what sign do you have that, that uh, for us doing these things? Jesus answered that destroy this temple. He's talking about the physical uh, temple, which would have been the, uh, what we call Herod's, Herod's temple, temple at right. the time, right? Kind um, of rebuild. D- yeah. yeah. Destroy, which was a massive temple. It was, it was incredible. It took 46 complex. years, 46 years to build. Destroy the mm-hmm. temple. And in three days, I, these are words of Jesus, I will raise it up. And what does is, what is John come back and make commentary in verse 21 he says this word. So this is John 2, 18 to 21. He says in verse, verse 21, but he, 
was speaking about what? The temple that was his body. No, go ahead. Sorry. Help me out. He was speaking what? About the temple. About the temple of his body. body. Think about that. So like, so what's the temple? Well, wait a second. Now, we're not done yet because Jesus, how many times did Jesus talk about being the bridegroom? And he came for the bride. That's right. Like these are words of Jesus. Paul goes on to, to add different language. He would refer to the body of Christ. And Paul would talk about that as part of the body of Christ, we are the temple. Wait a second. Now let's go back to Revelation for a second here. Look with me in verse 3. He says, so because this is what it all means. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, help me out. Would you read this with me? Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. Yes, he will dwell with them and they will be his foreigners. He will be his people. And what? God himself. This is such important language. Such important language. God himself will be with them as their God. So, So what does all this mean? So now we have this picture, the holy city coming down. Check this out, y'all. The holy city coming down is the abiding presence of God. Like we've been all, like how many feet is that? How many miles? 1,380? Like like I got to get the math on this so I can really paint. Or is it primarily, again, not that we're eliminating the physical, but isn't it clear here That what this is most about is the abiding presence of God. It is the full and eternal incarnation of Jesus himself. Anybody excited about that, right? And But make sure we connect the dots. So yes, it's Jesus in one sense, the incarnation of Jesus, but it's his body, it's us, it's his bride, his people with him coming down and reigning and ruling with God forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. right? So that's why we say the revelation of God's presence, this is ultimately God's people, with God's presence and God's people being active and enjoying him forever. And then you go from there and experience all the possibilities. And it's why we said, really, the primary point, God, or the fundamental, is God is everlastingly with his people. And that's such good news. Amen. Y'all, it's such good news. Amen. It's such good news. That's right. Such good news. That's right. With all the, the shock and awe that we see in Revelation, right? And we've, we've just barely begun to scratch the surface of it. If we ever wonder if we matter to the king of the universe, right? The one that made all of this, made all of us. If it ever crosses our mind that, well, yeah, he's great and powerful, but I don't really matter to him. This, this next verse four, just, mm. I, it just grips me. He will Should. wipe away every tear. <laughs> Death shall be no more, right? <laughs> Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away, right? (laughs) Yes, yes. We're waiting for that day, right? We cannot wait for that day. But we we can have this moment as we're talking about living in the new Jerusalem right now. Like that's something that's happening right now in this moment. The kingdom has come, and yet it's still coming, right? We see him, we see the Lord caring so deeply about the things that we are experiencing right now in this moment in life. And, And there's... You know, I was thinking about this morning, just we're just praying through this as we do, um, the, all the opportunities for tears that we have in this life, and, and they really are on kind of this big sliding scale where we've got, you know, minor frustrations where I'm just like, so frustrating that I, you know, spilled my coffee all over the floor, or whatever <laughs> it was, you know, Winston loved it, but, you know, so there's small things that are, can be frustrating, and then there's life's enormous yeah. tragedies, Pain. right? And, and yeah. traumas that we experience. And there's right. all the things Injustice. in between. Yeah. Injustice. We have, you know, physical limitations. We have illness, chronic things that, that don't seem to go away, right? Things that we, that we struggle with. Disappointments, you know, broken, broken dreams. So many things that can cause that tearful response. And, and I, I just, I'm so grateful that God has given to us in a, in a physical sense a way to, to process that, and we should yeah. never, and please, let's never be ashamed of our tears. Never. Mm-hmm. 
it's good for us, right? <laughs> to, to release yeah. that just on a, to on be a, honest. Like a, honest <laughs> on with a physical sense. Yes. Absolutely right. To yes. let out the emotions that we feel. But someday, all reasons for tears will be gone. They will be absolutely and entirely taken, taken care of. But until that day, in the midst of the, the pain and the tears and the struggles that we all face in life at different times, we have a choice to either pull away from God or be drawn near to Him. Yeah. And, and God is, is drawn to our brokenness and he's, you know, He sees us and loves us and cares for us so deeply. When He sees us struggling, yeah. He desires to draw near to us. And I'm, I'm not talking about salvation, I'm just talking about just really just the fellowship with Him. Mm-hmm. We can pull away or we can draw near. And Psalm 34, 18 says that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Yep. So if we're experiencing crushing right now, if we're feeling brokenhearted over whatever it might be, the Lord is drawing near to us and desires to be near to us. Yeah. We see that in, in eternity, we're going to be near God and suffering will be no more, right? That, yeah. that, that will be, but we'll be completely whole and well in our body and soul. And I love Psalm 16 as well. Psalm 16, verse 11, it says, And you have made known to me the path of life. In your presence, Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And we surely experience that now on, in a level, but ultimately yeah. someday it will be in all of its fullness. <laughs> God is everlastingly with his people. Yeah. And number two is that he culminates all of his promises. So all of the things that he has promised to do in the healing and mending and perfecting of our yeah. hearts and lives, oh, it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> and I, I just, I, so just a quick observation. Um, students may have picked this up already. Like there is a generational you know, different, a perspective that changes from gener- in our generation, where as we age, we're like a little bit more mindful of, you know what, heaven's looking pretty good after all, right? <laughs> but well, I, there's I, that. But yeah. I go back to my, my young years, like I was just, yeah. I wanted to experience life. I, right. To be honest, one of my other uh, desires, like before he came back, is I wanted to get married. Don't come back until I get married. Like, <laughs> So students, yeah, so, yeah, so seriously, exactly. as we're younger, we're right. like, we have these like ambitions and we're yeah. like, we, wait a and those second. those are good things. You know, they're, those are they're good totally good. To, yeah, to but, want. But if, yeah. if part, of, part of the goal here, and it's the goal of Jesus, so it's, it should be our goal, is that, is that we embrace this eternal perspective that goes beyond just, just planet Earth. Because what happens is if we're so holding on to now, to this present we talked about this, we can start adjusting our belief system, our doctrine. So, or maybe, maybe somebody's single, maybe you're single, and you're like, you know what? I'm single, and so sexual purity and sexual morality, it's like I need to experience life while I can. And, and so now all of a sudden, well, I'm still going to have my faith, I'm still going to follow Jesus, but I'm like, I'm going to take this one area and, and give myself liberties that are outside of God's plan. And, and, and we can look at it and say, well, that's really unfair for God mm. to put restrictions on me. Mm. Heard that? Oh, yeah. Thought that? Yeah. And, and, and that, now we start adjusting. Well, it must be okay here, mm. here. And so that, that can run the whole gambit of life's decisions and choices if we're embracing just the now rather than the whole eternity. Exactly. Because Amen. there's the joy of the Lord is the greatest joy. And the, the, we, we just have to keep living as we experience it more and more each time. So it, it does. The, all the promises, because I, I think if we're younger, we're like, well, wait a second. Promises haven't been fulfilled. Like, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Mm-hmm. And, and that's the message of the thing. Don't think about just this, this side of glory. Keep in perspective. All of it gets fulfilled. All the, the holy, perfected, righteous desires and pleasures, the righteous pleasures, are fully realized in Him and in eternity. And that's good news, right? Yeah. Amen. So, amen. 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 That's my two cents. It's very good. Know, right? That's your two cents. Yeah. Beautiful.
So, let, let, sweetheart, I'm, I'm going to have you trash this one. I, okay. We didn't get a chance to talk about it, but. Oh, okay. You, are you ready? You ready sure. for this one? Okay. You bet. All right. Yeah. Verse six. <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's captivating, right? Because we just heard. We're pointed back. We saw the the vision is That's holy right. city coming down. All this glory, yes. beautiful thing, and then. The, 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 the text takes us back to the throne. We talked about the throne the last couple of weeks. And the glorious throne, the power. But here's what we don't want to forget. In the midst of all this revelation, we, we're brought back to the throne of God, which is, remember, six horns, six eyes, or excuse me, seven eyes, seven horns, which is re- referring to the full authority of God. Because we dare not forget God is in charge. He is all powerful. He is all sovereign. He knows all. He is over it. And we align our doctrine (laughs) under that, right? Does that make sense? Like like that's the superseding doctrine that we hold. And so that's why we're brought back to the throne of grace. So then we have these verses. And here it goes. Because now we're reminded of the judgment. And he said to me, and it's done, I'm the Alpha, the Omega. Sure, I mean, you speak to that. And then it goes, the thirsty to the one who conquers will have his heritage and I will be his God. And then we have this in verse 8. Like, actually, can we just be transparent with you on this? We're like, well, the reading is like so glorious up to verse 7. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think maybe we'll just have Roland just Roland stop just, there. Yeah. <laughs> just cut right there. How many want to yeah. do that? Like, all the good people in the room oh, yeah. should want to do that. Like, mm. can't we just stop at seven? Mm. But then verse eight happens. Yeah. Man, and they're like, so can I just, yeah. this, this got to break our heart. If it doesn't. Yes. So yes. verse eight, and but as cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, mur- and, 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 and so goes on. So sweetheart, explain that. Okay, sure, no problem. So first we're going to start with the alpha and the omega. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We're going to good. go there first. Okay, good. No, good. Just, yeah. Amen. Yeah, well, right. actually, yes. that's the important framing here. So it is, it is. because it's, it's yeah. you know, the, the Greek <laughs> be, beginning and the end of the Greek al- alphabet is alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, right? I think it's what interesting that started. it was Greek, not Hebrew. I think that's something to note. Speaking the language of these, these hearers. Absolutely. This, yeah. this would have been a very common yeah. So he's including the Jewish of, language yeah, of the temple, sure. but also the Greek. Uh, anyways. Right. Absolutely. He finishes what he starts, right? We see the Lord Always. declaring this name. This is one of the names of, of God that the, that the Lord speaks, is that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. That he's going to finish what he start and what started. And what we see here in Revelation is like the outworking of what happened, what started on the cross. This is watching it come to its full fulfillment, full ramifications. So we can know that if God has redeemed us, and we are saved, but we are also being saved, that this is going to continue until it's complete, till we are entirely sanctified and we go to glory perfected, right? Praise God for that. The working out of the cross is what we're seeing happening here. And we have this contrast, and he, he does, he encourages thirst for him, you know, for the thirsty. Yeah. He is going to quench the thirst, and I loved the worship this morning, Christine, that was so beautiful. So yeah, beautiful. Hungry. Yeah, oh just my that goodness, yes. Sitting in that space. Lord, let and that letting... be stirred in us, yeah. right? That yeah. hunger and thirst for the Lord would be let stirred. Be. Well, we have this contrast here in this passage that we're looking at where we're talking about conquerors. Right. And then he talks about the, the cowardly. And I'm just, we're just going to hit a couple of these really, really quickly here. So conquerors in this framework, these are people who are living counterculturally. People that are not, you know, bowing to the principles and perspectives and values that we see in the world around us. It's people who have chosen to honor God, right? What God says, what God deems is right and holy. That is what we're going to align ourselves to. And therefore, there's the conquering because Jesus Christ is the ultimate conqueror, right? We come in line with him, as you said earlier. So we shouldn't shouldn't be embracing uh, like the, the... just the, the traditional warrior kind of thinking. It's conquering as in, I mean, there's a sense of that, but it's this, it's this victorious life, right. the life in Christ. Well, that's that where is, the abundance is, right? He yeah, told us that's, that that's, conquering, that's where the right. good life, right. the full, rich life is, is in following good, him. Good. So to live counterculturally as a citizen of the New Jerusalem is to conquer, essentially choosing God's reign over every other possibility, Amen. right? Yeah. 
So we see this here. So the, the, the people of God, the conquerors, those who are thirsty, these are people who have ultimately been forgiven. Because as we look at this list of, you know, the cowardly, faithless, detestable, all of those things, like, first of all, you know, th- this, is, this is all of us outside Christ. Mm-hmm. There's, there's not one yeah. human being that can stand righteous before God outside of Christ. It can't happen, right? right? right. And another important thing we want to bring out is that this list of, of folks, these are, are not people that are, you know, struggling with their faith or honestly and sincerely considering the truth claims of Jesus Christ. We're not talking about those people. We're talking about people who have chosen made the decision to reject the forgiveness and love and salvation of yeah. God. Yeah. It's, it, the, these things are, it, it's, it's what they have chosen to be, not, what they, not their behavior, not things they're struggling with. Good. Things that they have, they have chosen as, they've embraced it fully to yeah. embrace these things. Yeah. Yeah. But anytime we think about judgment, we remember that, you know, Jesus is the hard proof for the incredible love of God, the fact that we can be saved from all of that. There's not one thing yeah. on that very difficult yeah. list that we cannot be salvaged He's, out of, plucked out of that pit, murderers. right? He saves liars. He saves adulterers. Yeah. He does. Good. Every, Good. Single, every single one that will turn to Christ, yeah. right? Yeah. So we see, um, you know, that 2 Peter 3, 9 says that the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but mm. is patient toward you, toward all of us, Love not that. wishing that any should perish. This yes. is God's will that nobody would perish, right? Yeah. But that everyone would come to Good. repentance. Good. We need to know that when yeah. we're thinking about, about how this judgment thing is going to work out. And even in, in John 5, 22, same writer of Revelation in his gospel says that, you know, Jesus, the words of Jesus, that the father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the son. <laughs> so let's think about that for just a second. The Son is the one who put on human flesh and came and lived a perfect human sinless life by the power of the Spirit, right? Right. Tempted in all ways, just as we are, and yet without sin. He's the one (laughs) who's fully aware of what it means to be human, right? He's the one that gets to bring judgment. (laughs) God the Father has removed himself from that process. It's the Son. We have an advocate, Mm -hmm. Hebrews says. Yeah. We can come before the throne of grace and ask for help every time we need it, yeah. right? And we're yeah. going to find the grace and mercy yeah. that we need. And I think I... Amen. amen right, because here's just super quick. This is why it's so important, brothers and sisters, yes. that we do not sit in judgment yes. against us, those that are among us, us and Lord. outside of us. Amen. We amen. are messengers of the good news of Jesus Christ. It is God's job. God's responsibility, God's knowledge of knowing where somebody's heart is. Ours is the ministry, the ambassadorship of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so it's so important to not even have the tone or smell or the sarcasm. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Of those people. But that our heart breaks for everyone that struggles and that everyone that is alienated from God in their choosing. Because such were some of we. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were so that. were some of me. We were that. Yeah, so that's why all these, we'll just grab the points again. God is everlastingly with his people. It's why he culminates all of his promises. Yeah. We see this. And this is the victory we have, that he renews all things in his Amen. glory. Amen. So we come back and we ask that question, how should we live now? Like in light of all those realities? <laughs> That better rock our world. Like it needs to rock our world. It better rock our world. Reorienting how we do life. Because the end will come. <laughs> so it's not, it's not if. And what we choose this side of glory, like this matters now. So in one sense, it very much is a a YOLO. You only live once. Thank you. Yeah. Just try to <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. I just know it's YOLO. Um, <laughs> only live once. And, and in one yeah. sense, it is like, yeah, bucket list. Verse 9 through, through 12 encapsulates this. And I just, I just bring us to the center verse in this because it kind of just brings it home. It talks about the seven bowls. But then it, 
And the, so the judgment. And then, it's, then it goes into verse, as it nice, says, come, I will show you the bride. And that's, that's us, the wife of the lamb. It's described. So, uh, boy, the whole marriage picture is such a big deal here. Um, the bride, the one flesh. We're like one. Think about that one. We're one flesh with God, with Jesus Christ. Think about that. And that's why we say, when it matters, that it matters, we reign and rule with Him. Then? Yeah. And now? Amen. Like, how cool is that? There's one little interesting thing that could be missed with this little passage here. It's this little, we'll go to the, the verse here, verse, uh, actually with that question again. Um, and, and that follow-up verse, it says, showed me, city of Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. That, so again, the way it reads, I see this, it's coming down. But what's very interesting in the original language, in the Greek language, it's what's referred to as a, as a present participle. And you're like, half of you look at me, the only it's one that... It's a part of Greek that I failed. Yeah, I probably, well, the, the question I missed on these it, things. It, you, it will connect it with English here. <laughs> Our part, the participle, so it's a, so an active verb and it's a compound. But it's uniquely, it's in the present tense. And why, why that matters is because he's, he's making sure, and the first hearers are going to hear this, that it, is, it will happen coming down, but it's a present reality mm. that it has come down. Yes, and it's why Jesus said, he came preaching what? The kingdom of God is... Come on, y'all. You, you, you know the word. The kingdom of God is, is at hand. And... This is, this is how we, we, we close the loop with all this together, right? This is a present reality that must rock our world. That the kingdom rule that we get to participate in is not only a kingdom that is in the future, but is here and now. And it's what it means. Please hear this. It's what it means to be in Christ. Followers, if we've accepted Christ, born again, we are now in Christ. And the Spirit of Christ is in us, students. Hear this. And so it's why we make a decision. And, and I hope that everyone, at the sound of my voice, before you leave here today, will make a decision, if you haven't already. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to receive the gift of salvation. And I am going to receive the Spirit of Christ. Because now I'm in Christ. And now is the day of salvation where I get to begin letting the kingdom of God be the reign and rule. So all the values, the way I love, the way the flesh is crucified, where I'm not satisfying the sinful desires, I'm allowing this, my spirit to be in union with his spirit and to be alive. And I, I love uh, one of our favorite professors when he said, when, when we finally see the face of God, our hearts will want nothing else. Amen. And so what we encourage us today as we just closing thoughts here. Let's keep eternity. How, do we, how are we going to live today? Let's answer the question. Keep eternity in your thoughts. Keep eternity in your thoughts. Like, it's a That's good right. thing. That's right. Think about it. Talk about it. Just make sure we connect the dots that that eternity, in a very real sense, is already being able to be experienced in Christ. Amen. Not in Babylon. The world, but in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's a writer named Victor Hugo. You're probably uh, familiar with him. He wrote a book called Les Miserables, and it's about this thick. It's like ginormous, like doorstop <laughs> kind of material. And uh, he, was, he was a believer in, in Christ, and um, he was talking one day about how he feels like he still has so many things inside him that he hasn't written down yet. So <laughs> much more to write, so much more to do. And... Um, you know, but he's talking about how the, the grave is not the end. Yeah. He says this, he says that my day's work, after I, after I die, my day's work will begin again the next morning. <laughs> the tomb is not a blind alley, right? It's a thoroughfare. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> right? So good. He's good. It so closes good. on the twilight, but it opens on the dawn. <laughs> this idea that there's, there's more to do. And I, I guess I'm, I'm going to hazard this, this is my opinion, yeah. that anything that is good 
and giving glory to God that we'll be able to do those things yeah. in the next life, yeah. right? Yeah. That cr- wh- why does creative yeah. activity have to start, right? Stop, right? right? Why can't we continue to write and just, read and yeah. learn and study and make art and yeah. do and all those instead things? And instead of bitter coffee, it'll be just really great it'll tea. It'll be perfect. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> bagels, lots of bagels. Sorry, no, Christine, <laughs> no, okay. No, Nicholas, that's not, no. Good coffee. No. The good kind. Right. It's really, like, exactly. think of, so, so can't we just say this? Keep filling the bucket list. Yeah. But let's, right. let's think of all the possibilities right. of all eternity. Exactly. Right? So we were on vacation a couple years ago. Yeah. And uh, it, we were, we're at the beach. And, uh, you know, eventually in your beach vacation, you have to leave the beach chair, right, and go to the gym. After a while, you just need <laughs> to go do something else, you know, to, yeah, because anyways, it, it was time. So I went one, one day on this vacation that we had, and they had this really cool treadmill, and maybe you've seen them, but it's, um, it had this screen that you could, like, plug in where you wanted to, to watch as you ran. So I thought, all right, I'll just do a little run through Northern California in Muir Woods, one of my favorite places on Earth. It's just a beautiful red, you know, old growth, redwood beautiful. forest, yeah, incredible. So I did a little jog through there, and I thought, hmm, where else could I go? And I thought, oh, look, the Black Forest in Germany, why not? So I did that, and I did a little run there, and don't, don't be impressed. I, I'm not a great runner at all. <laughs> I'm just, like, kind of jogging along, you know, whatever. I just, I just try not to fall off the treadmill, really, is the main thing. Just stay on it. And then I thought, uh, Peru, yes, let's go there next. You know, Machu Picchu, whatever, running around there. And I thought at the time, wouldn't it be amazing to be able to run this way, right? And it, with a perfect set of lungs and perfect legs and knees that don't ache, right? Feet that don't hurt. To be able to, wow, you know... Wow, we're showing our age. I guess wow. so. Okay, well, Anyways, to your point, fine. yes. I, whatever, yeah. <laughs> That we can like transcend space and time, right? That we yeah. could like hop around the globe. And I don't know. I don't know if we can do that Happen or not. With Philip but, and, uh, come on. you know, yeah. it's not a bad thing to imagine, right? right? That right. maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. we could go yeah. and see all these things that fast, right? Yeah. yeah. But here's the... Uh, Amazing. Um, can I just... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, First yeah. Corinthians. Yeah, please. Yeah, actually. First Corinthians 15, <laughs> right? Paul writes these words. Behold, Good. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed in a moment, in the yeah. twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Yeah. But the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, yeah. and we shall be changed. For yeah. this perishable body must put on the imperishable. This mortal body must put on immortality, right? Yeah. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. 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 Stand with us. Let me go to that last slide there, because there's, because here. So, what did you call it? Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Picchu. I think. Picchu, I think. Whatever. I don't know. Machu Picchu. Seven one of the world. I think. There. Yeah. I mean, really. So I'm curious. On your bucket list, how many it involves? It involves traveling. Like yeah, like like really ghosty places you hadn't seen before. Like most of us have some place that we want to see. Especially if we didn't have to, if we didn't have to do all the things, we'd love to see it. So, but here's here's the, the most important thing. Um, there there is one phase, there is one place that'll be greater yes. than any yes. place in the entire world or entire the heavens, and it's to see Jesus Amen. face Amen. to face, Amen. face to face. And so, we applaud this morning. Live today. In the nearness of God. Yes. And in the oneness of community. Because we will spend eternity together. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, fooey. <laughs> I, I saw it, uh, Chris, I thought of you or something. I, the first faces that I wanted to see in oh, heaven, yeah. it was... It was dogs. a picture of like six dogs' faces looking in. Like, yeah. that's the first. Like, so I want to see Jesus and five dogs, right? Yeah, so. but, but beyond that, it's like we do this together. Yes. But it'll be the perfected version of all of us. So that's good. It's good. We won't be near as annoying as we could be yeah. here on earth. So. so let's do that. Live today in the nearness of God. Because he's here. And if you're here and you've been far from God, Come close to him today. 
Jesus paid the price so that every one of us, and it's his desire Thank you. for you to be saved. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to just bow your heads. Mind just real quick. Is there anybody in the house today that just, I'm ready to make a decision to follow Jesus. Would you, just can you get my attention just up here? Just raise your hand and just give it a second here. If you're online. I hope you'll just reach out to us. Anybody else? Just eyes closed. You can just lift it. Nobody's looking. So just real quick. You ready? Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Okay. Good. I want to pray with us. And actually, would you pray? So we'll just join the online audience. Father God, we just today, we, we by faith, and we join those that maybe are making a decision for the first time to accept you, a decision. We'd, we join with them and say, forgive us our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from all the Babylonian corruption and thoughts and the world's ways, as we say. Lord, right now, we embrace the righteousness of Christ. We receive the gift of salvation and the cleansing and the forgiveness of our sins, knowing that we are now born again by faith, having now been born in the Spirit, have the Spirit of Christ dwelling within us. We are, in your language of Scripture, saved. We are now your children. Thank you. And for all of us here, we say thank you, thank you. for making us your sons thank and daughters. You. Yes, we do. Thank, thank you, Lord. God. We were not worthy, but you right. came. And you right. made it, Lord, possible. Yes, thank you. So today, Lord, as we celebrate and we ponder what eternity is going to look like, thank you for being near to us now. Thank you. And giving us the hope that is so much greater than what the world has to sell us. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth. As it is in heaven. Here today Lord. We ask this. In Jesus mighty name. And everybody said. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Nice. 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 It was a fun series. Thank you for taking time. Good to yes. word out. Get it on yes. YouTube. You just let somebody else know about it.